Hello, I'm Chris Sarley, Investment Research Analyst at Fund Calibre, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Carl Stick and Alan Dobby, co-managers of the elite-rated Rathbone Income Fund. Thank you both for joining us today. Hello. Good morning. So, Alan, let's start with the UK stock market. It's been in a it's had a challenging number of years, really. It's underperformed global peers for a long time, struggling to attract new companies. We hear about the discount of UK equities versus other parts of the world. Very few people investing in here, outflows, et cetera, et cetera. In a nutshell, does it worry you? I mean, the UK is the most mature market, the leading market for dividends. Is is, is that something that could ever change in, in the, the near future, or are you relatively sort of comfortable with the situation? Yeah, well, I mean, as as you highlighted there, there's, I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that the UK has had a difficult few years. Um, you know, if you look in comparison to the US market, US markets benefited from, I would say, it's a, a virtuous circle of of companies delivering decent earnings uh, or decent earnings growth. That's led to uh, investor inflows, the market re-rating higher. The UK's kind of had the opposite. We've had slightly weaker earnings growth. That's led to investors withdrawing their money, and the market's just got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So, you know, looking backwards, it's certainly not a pretty picture. But um, of course, what we're all interested in is is what happens next, and we're pretty excited about the opportunity within the. UK at the moment. Um, and that's because all that negativity over recent years uh, means that, as you as you alluded to in the question, the UK now trades an absolutely massive discount versus the rest of the world. It always trades in a bit of a discount, you know, typically 15, 20% discount, but we're now looking at a 40% discount. And that's that's not something that either Carl or I have seen in our investment careers. Um, and we're excited about that because uh, that cheapness really is the the raw material for future outperformance, certainly on a relative basis. It's not enough on its own. You need a catalyst as well, but you do need that cheapness to be there. Um, so the big question that we always get, of course, from clients is, well, what is the catalyst? Um, and it's a difficult one to answer because... Uh, you know, catalysts are always easier to to spot with hindsight. But one thing that we've been pretty excited about recently is the increased political will that we're seeing to to fix the issue, really, to fix the issues within the UK market, to make it a more attractive place for uh, UK companies to IPO, to stop the the, the postcode to zip code uplift that companies are looking for by moving their listing from London to New York to encourage the natural buyers of UK equities, so pension funds, insurance companies, retail investors, to get back involved in the UK market. We've seen private, uh, private pension funds just over 20 years ago they used to have a 50% allocation to UK equities. That's currently at 4%. So we are seeing increased political will. Just last weekend, actually, there was things in the paper, rumours in the paper that the Chancellor could announce a, a new allowance, a new ISA allowance to invest specifically in UK companies. We don't quite know how that would work if it does get announced. You know, there is increased political will to get this issue sorted. So it will take time, but you combine cheapness and potential catalysts out there. It's a pretty exciting time for the UK market, we think. And let's go straight into the sort of the dividend side of things. I mean, that's the bedrock of most people's investing and the UK is sort of the first port of call for that often. Maybe just give us an outlook of what dividends look like today. Is there a lot on offer? And, you know, are companies holding on to their cash as the outlook is uncertain? Maybe give us a bit of insight into that. Yeah, um, I mean, we think the UK is actually pretty well positioned from a dividend point of view at the moment. Uh, UK companies have obviously been through a huge amount over recent years from with Brexit, then we had COVID lockdowns, we had the mini budget last year, ongoing fear of recession. Um, so I think companies have been, they've already been relatively prudent. Company boards have been relatively prudent when they've been setting their dividend uh, policies over recent years. It's not like we're coming from a period of kind of real exuberance. For our own fund, I mean, we focus a lot on dividend growth. We've got a really good track record of growing uh, growing the fund's dividend. We've grown it in 28 of the last 30 years. We're actually just coming up to our own fund's year end at the end of September. Um, so we're going to be putting through a mid-single digit increase in dividend uh, this year. Um, and that's, so, I mean, that's going to offset the bulk of the inflationary pressure that we're seeing. And that's really important. We try to, you know, we're trying to uh, make sure that the income we pay is at least as much in real terms as as the previous year to preserve the purchasing power of our um, the client's income stream. Um, so, what our board's going to be thinking about at the moment? 
the latest UK economic data has been a bit more mixed. We've seen, though perhaps we're seeing inflation peaking, we're seeing uh, growth forecasts coming down. I think the consensus is that the UK may be flirting with recession over coming quarters. And that could certainly impact uh, board thinking when they're setting their dividends uh, for the current year. We also have to always remember currency is so important for for, uh, UK dividends. So many UK listed companies that declare their dividends in dollars. So what happens uh, between dollar sterling, if we get dollar strength, then UK dividends are going to be in a relatively good place. Um, So I would say overall, we're pretty, I would say, cautiously optimistic about the dividend outlook for UK companies over the coming year. And obviously, one of the things that the viewers are quite keen on is to sort of know how you interact with companies. So, um, Carl, maybe you, you talk us through, you, you recently met with a couple of your top 10 holdings, the likes of PA Systems and Legal in general. Maybe maybe just talk us through some of those meetings and, and what you look for when you're talking to management and, you know, how do you assess a good company, bad company, whether things are changing for the good, the better? Just, just a bit of insight on that, please. Oh, no, absolutely no problem. I think, I mean, the first point, um, philosophically is we do look at businesses and we view them as being the stewards of our capital, the stewards of your client's capital. Um, so when we talk to them, we're, tr- we're trying to understand you know, what decisions they're making about how they allocate that capital into the business. Um, you know, is there a strategic cohesiveness around the strategy? You know, do, uh, do we understand what they're trying to do? Is there a vision? But also, are they managing the business well as well? You know, it's just it's it's operational and it's strategy. It's it's allocation of capital, um, and are they doing that sensibly? And are the decisions they make are the, are the decisions that they are making are they aligned with what we are trying to achieve in our investment process? And I think when with BAE Systems and Legal in general, two totally different businesses at two totally different stages, um, but they give you a bit of an insight into how. Um, how we think about investment feeds through into how we look at companies. So BAE Systems, um, the old British Aerospace, the, the chief executive there has been in place since 2017, Charles Woodburn, and he's done a terrific job. He's done a great job in terms of getting the business very operationally efficient. They're doing the, the basic things well. Um, they're very focused on their core business. Um, he's they're generating a lot of cash profit, you know, proper cash that's being used to invest in the business, cash that's being used to short the balance sheet, to finance the pension, to pay us a dividend. So they've done some really good things very, very well. It's difficult to look at the tragedy in Ukraine and garner investment benefits from that. But the point is that what we've seen over the last couple of years is a structural shift now in terms of um, security of defence. Spending has gone up. So the visibility that a business like BAE Systems has has been extended. Um, so there's that that opportunity um, that, that they can see. And as I say, you combine that with um, a strong business operationally, and it's, it's, it's an interesting investment opportunity. Now, Over the summer, BAE Systems announced a $5.6 billion acquisition of a business called Ball Aerospace. It's an American business. So they are choosing to invest $5.6 billion of capital in that business. And that changes the risk metrics for us. And we have to look at that within our own framework. So, you know, is it a sensible acquisition? Well, it's definitely strategically important. Ball Aerospace is very much focused on space. That it might be defense, it might be civil, it might be commercial applications and vehicles going up into space. It's an area that is new for BAE systems. It is strategically important. It's probably an acquisition that they should be doing, but it is not without risk because they're moving into something different. It's a big acquisition. There are operational challenges involved in doing that, and they've had to pay a decent price to get that business. So, from our risk framework, the business risk has changed. It's a big acquisition. The financial risk has changed because they're taking a little bit more debt to do that, but they are financially strong. They can do that. And the price risk, well, they're paying up a full price to buy that business. So we are still holders of BAE Systems. Um, it's a business that we want to own, but our interaction with the business over the summer has been very much 
around understanding that acquisition through our own prism of risk and understanding how it checks, uh, how it influences the business risk, the financial risk, and the price risk of our investment. Legal in general, totally different type of business. Um, the shares are relatively cheap, so on that basis, it's a it's a it's a it's an investment for us. It's a good investment for us. It's a very very high yielder, uh, but the shares have been cheap for a long long time. So we do have a, a feeling of angst around that. Why are they cheap? They came out with results, first half results over the summer. That's when we um, saw them. The results are absolutely fine. They're not going to set the world alight, but there was no, nothing there that got us really worried about the business. But the shares still um, trade at a discount. It's an important business for UK funds. It's a big part of the index. It's a big part of the UK economy. What is interesting with that business and the way the shares reacted on the day still comes back down to capital allocation because they said, look, everything's fine, but the market was slightly disappointed because they didn't announce a big share repurchase. They didn't say, we are going to allocate some of our capital to buy back our shares because they're so cheap. They said two things, really, or inferred two things. One was... The market's still difficult. The economy's still difficult. We'd rather keep that firepower. And they also said there are lots of opportunities within our own business to invest. We can allocate that capital into our own business. So when we look at legal in general, we're questioning our investment decision. The shares are cheap, but what's the catalyst to change that? I'm not sure. But we also recognize what the company's saying. We are choosing to allocate capital within our own business and to make sure our balance sheet remains strong, we're not yet at a position to buy back shares. So it's a totally different scenario to the BAE systems, but both businesses are in our top 10. They both provide us with a decent level of growing dividend. Legal and General's dividend was up 5%, but we are minded they represent different challenges to us as investments. Alan, Carl, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. And if you'd like to learn more about the Rathbone Income Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com.